Well, this morning, uh, what I want to do is have you turn your Bibles over to the book of Nehemiah, and we're going to be looking at chapter 2 and chapter 3. Uh, we're not going to be reading all of each chapter, obviously, but uh, I'll be referencing back and forth uh, to those uh, uh, passages of Scripture. Nehemiah chapter 2 and chapter 3. Well, we're here, 2024, which means New Harvest Christian Fellowship is celebrating 50 years of ministry for the cause of Jesus Christ. Amen. 50 years, 50, a half a century. Think about that. Uh, longer than some of you are old, uh, have been born here this morning. 50 years of proclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord to a hurting and broken world. And this morning I want to talk uh, with you for a few moments about God's church. I want to talk with you this morning about the church you belong to and the journey that we've been on to get where we are today. At New Harvest, listen to me this morning, there has been 50 years of praising the Lord. 50 years uh, of worshiping and singing and 50 years uh, of fellowshipping together with one another. 50 years of serving others, of evangelizing, 50 years of feeding and helping people all over the world. 50 years. 50 years of serving God, 50 years of preaching, teaching, 50 years of baptizing people, 50 years of inviting people to come to church and leading them to the Lord Jesus Christ. 50 years of making a difference around the globe. Praise God. New Harvest Christian Fellowship is still standing strong. And I invited... Our, our, our Sunday school classes in here this morning because I feel it's so important for our young people, our um, children, to be able to know who we are, where we came from, what we're all about. Isn't that what the Word of God says we're supposed to do? And sometimes we, you know, we're not too sure. We've got so many new people who have come into our church in the past years who have no idea what New Harvest was all, is all about concerning where we came from, how we got going, how we got here. And I want to share a few things this morning based on the book of Nehemiah and referencing back and forth so our kids can understand what kind of church they belong to and what it took for us to get where we are today. When Nancy and I first came to New Harvest, Victory Chapel at that time, there were, yep, some of you remember Victory Chapel, there were two couples in the Bible study slash church at that time. Nancy and I made three. Some single moms and a bunch of crying babies. And as the church grew, we moved from place to place from a living room where that Bible study and church first started. Tom Haynes knows what I'm talking about over there. From a living room in a house to sharing a church building for a time in Pico Rivera to being given an old building, a church building in Monterey Park, and to finally coming here to Norwalk, our current location, and purchasing this property in 1982. And it's been a, a journey for us throughout those years. This place used to be an old grocery store. I've mentioned that before. When we bought it, which was converted into a, a small sanctuary, the entrance used to be probably back where the emergency exit is by, to the street by the men's room. That used to be the entrance, and there was another door right where this door, these doors are. And it was probably the size of just 
this part, and that was the end of it. A few converted schoolrooms, and I've got some pictures if we can show them. They're kind of, a couple of them are kind of grainy because they were pulled out of the um, archives. Thank George Gax for helping me out. You can see uh, that big wall at the back. That's Norwalk Toyota. And that uh, lower building there is what our church used to look like. We call it the beehive look because it had a, all it had was construction paper and uh, uh, plaster wire around it. And you can see there was a door back there. And you got another picture to show you. Uh, that picture represents our old foyer right here in the parking lot. And so, uh, again, you see what it used to look like. It uh, wasn't very pretty, and, and uh, you know, what can I say? Well, we dealt with it, and there was, I guess, the outreach team uh, standing there and, you know, selling drinks after service and doing whatever. They were 1989. And then the next picture uh, there, 1999, when we uh, were able to raise enough finances and to knock the old building down. And, you know... It's really something when uh, the construction crew was here and the demo crew was tearing the building down. They happened for whatever reason, we know why it is, but for whatever reason it stood like that for about maybe four or five days, maybe a week. That's that, that wall that says with God, and you probably can't read it underneath it, all things are possible. Um, that wall uh, basically uh, was right there and um, left that wall up and the whole neighborhood can kind of be evangelized. Meanwhile, they were going to knock it down. And so in 1999, we rebuilt and to our current location where we are and what it looks like now and uh, today. There we are. What a big difference. And we were able to do that and able to uh, uh, have our journey here to be able to construct that building because of faithful people like you. And I want the kids to understand this, that it was your parents and your grandparents uh, who invested in this ministry to be able to do that. You see the picture behind me. We are where we are today because of the faithfulness of many people who love God. We have a pastoral staff which serves the Lord and are here to serve you. I'd like all of our pastors and wives to please stand if you could uh, this morning. If you, would you come on? Don't be shy. Pastors, stand. We got pastors in the back. We appreciate we appreciate our pastors and our staff uh, here this morning who serve and uh, who help us draw closer to the Lord in order to serve you and to help you progress in your faith. Amen. Thank you. We also have faithful ministry workers. Would everyone who is in ministry or maybe who was in ministry at one time uh, here at New Harvest throughout the years, would you stand this morning wherever you are, even if you're not in ministry right now or you are in ministry, I want you to stand. Look around you. Look around you. These are people who are standing who have served, who have labored, who have invested in lives, uh, who love God, the kind of people that are hardworking people for God. Thank you so much. And without these folks that I've just acknowledged, the work of the Lord here at New Harvest could never and would never have been accomplished to the point that we are today. New Harvest's 50-year journey has got, caused us to touch people around the globe. And as we have run our race, we've invested time, training, and finances over those 50 years into every church 
that has been planted or country evangelized under Victory Chapel or New Harvest Christian Fellowship. We have invest invested time, resources, uh, and training to all of those churches planted. Your giving is not in vain or without reward. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 8, Paul writes and he says, Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. And so what Paul is saying is that those have planted, which New Harvest has, and those who have watered, which we have watered, uh, many, many, many of all those churches that have been planted, uh, God says you will be rewarded uh, continually. Even those churches who are out there still laboring, you will be rewarded for your labors. I want to show you what New Harvest, Victory Chapel in New Harvest Christian Fellowship over the 50 years has planted churches and how we have progressed. Go ahead if we have that video. I say we've been busy for 50 years, reaching people, touching people, and we're still a ministry that will continue to invest resources in order to reach the lost people of this world. And let me just say this, I might have missed out a few cities in that list here in the United States uh, because my mind isn't what it used to be uh, 50 years ago. But we're still investing and willing to invest resources in order to reach people in this world. And you see, unlike mortgage companies and businesses, when you turn to them for help, what do they do is first check to see if your bills are paid up. And they'll check to see if your credit is good before they will help. But New Harvest has been there for churches and for you as the people of God, whether your last offering was last week or five months ago. We will help you whether you carried your share of the load and you tithe 10% or you give 5% or 2% or nothing at all. 
New Harvest will always be there to serve people, to serve you, no matter what. And so don't misunderstand me. I'm not giving you an excuse not to tithe because you're robbing God and you're robbing yourself. But you see, one of the greatest challenges for any ministry is to pass on its faith, its passion for God, and ministry principles in order to reach future generations. And so I want to look with you just for a few moments at Nehemiah. And I want to consider his life and the people he served who in times of difficulty were able to rebuild the walls and the gates uh, around uh, Jerusalem. And so I entitled this sermon, Rise Up and uh, Build. And in Nehemiah chapter 2, and verse 18, Nehemiah writes and says, And I told them of the hand of my God that had been upon me for good, and also of the words that the king had spoken to me. And they said, let us rise up and build. You see, the people were ready to work as Nehemiah shared his vision, his burden with them. They didn't ask many questions. They probably didn't ask any questions. All they knew that there was a man of God who had spent time with God, seeking God, who had a burden to do a work for God. Nehemiah was moved when he heard the walls and the gates of Jerusalem were burnt and broken down. Nehemiah connected his vision and uh, his burden to the people who were there because it was a work that he wanted to do to bring glory to God. I want to tell you something here this morning. Whatever we do as a church, we do to bring glory and honor to the King of kings and the Lord of God, Lords, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. Whatever we do in any way, shape, or form, that's why we do what we do. And you know, there's always some who try to oppose the work of God. Nehemiah faced his critics, uh, and so have we throughout the years. Because there will always be those who will oppose the gospel and the work of God. You see, when Jesus issued the, visit, the invitation to you and I to come and to follow him, it was the same call that Nehemiah got from God as he prayed. And that call was to go out uh, and do a work for God, the greatest work that any individual can do in his life, her, his or her lifetime, is to serve God, to labor for God, and to let people know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for them and that he gave his life for them and there is an answer for their life to be helped uh, and to be healed. The greatest work that anyone can do is to serve God. How many can say amen this morning? <laughs> Nehemiah was a wise leader, and he knew when to plan, when to speak, and when to shut up and work. And in verse 20 of that chapter, it says, so they put their hands to the good work. Over 50 year, for 50 years, New Harvest has been doing a good work for God. And we have so many people who have put their hands to do that good work. And in chapter 3, we see the product of those nine powerful words. Nine powerful words that we need to hold on to in the coming months and the coming years. So they put their hands to do the good work. Never forget you're doing a good work for God. Whether you're smiling at someone, shaking their hand, and saying, it's good to see you this morning, or you're telling somebody about Jesus Christ, or you're involved in some kind of ministry here in this church, whatever it is, it is a good work uh, for the kingdom of God. Don't let the devil lie to you that you're wasting your time. You see, Nehemiah understood 
that it was important to bring the people together. And he unified their efforts together. We've heard of the phrase, no man is an island. That phrase comes from an old English 17th century preacher um, named John Donne. And he used that phrase as he was preaching to say, no one is self-sufficient, but everyone relies on others. We need each other. Nehemiah understood if the wall, 52 days, think about this. 52 days, the walls were built and the gates were repaired. How was that able to happen? Simply because he got the people to stop looking at each other's problems, at their own problems, and started focusing on the good work for God. No one is self-sufficient. Everyone relies on others. And don't let anybody tell you any different. We need each other. We are a body of believers. We are the church of Jesus Christ, and we can't make it uh, without each other. I read a quote that said, the local church is not an organization for superstars. Do we have any superstars here this morning? It is a team that depends upon the willingness of all its members to see the good things leaders set before them and work to accomplish them. No elder, no deacon, no preacher or Bible class teacher, or Bible class teacher has the power to build a church by their own efforts. For 50 years, this church has been built and has been moving forward because of the efforts of individuals like yourselves working together, unified, doing a good work for God. Nehemiah understood the principle that everybody had to work together. Not some people, but all people. We've heard the old saying, there are three kinds of people in the world. People who make things happen, people who watch things happen, and people who wonder what happened. We need people who make things happen and to help things happen, not wonder what happened. You see, people who love God recognize and demonstrate a willingness like Nehemiah's folks there to do the work for God no matter who gets the credit, no matter whose name is on lights, no matter who's on stage, or no matter who has the, the highest ranking title in ministry, etc., and so on. Hey, wipe all that garbage out. Uh, it's all about all of us together. Vince Lombardi, great coach. Everybody uses him for quotes because he was a great thinker. He was a great leader. He said the difference between a successful person and others is not a lack of strength, not a lack of knowledge, but rather a lack of will. Will. Nehemiah gives us the understanding that the people were willing to work together, not only willing to work together, but side by side. You see that, those words, side by side, several times in chapter 3 of the book of Nehemiah. You know, the Empire State Building, one of the seven wonders of the world, was built over 94 years ago by 3,400 workers of different skills and different trades. 3,400 workers workers. No one person did it all by themselves, but they built each one their specific piece of the project according to their skill, just like the builders of the wall of Jerusalem. And in Nehemiah chapter 3, it gives us a perfect picture of the details of the work Ten different gates mentioned in repairing 40 sections of the wall that were damaged. And they did this in 52 days. 
And you see the expression next to, again, several times as you read there. As I said, I'm not going to read it because there's a, a, a lot of scripture to read, but you read it on your own time. And you see there was cooperation as they labored and did a good work for God. Cooperating with each other because they understood the wall could not be accomplished, the gates could not be rebuilt without working side by side in unison. I was uh, reading about or uh, watched a movie on, on uh, rowing. And it was a, about a school that had a rowing team. And uh, the coach was an ex-army uh, uh, veteran. And um, the old coach left and, you know, uh, here comes the new, the new coach. And they were used to the old ways and they, they had their superstar rowers and they had the guy who was supposed to be the leader. And this new coach came in and just tore everything down. And he asked them, why are you here? Why are you here? And, and, and no one could answer the question after all the years in, in college being on the team. And so he got them to a point where they're able, they were able, because they were always losing to Harvard. This, this rowing team was always losing to, to Harvard. They were, did well, and then they'd fizzle out towards a 2,000-meter uh, uh, rowing race. Eight men on a rowing boat. I have a picture here that shows you, and each person, each man, and they have women's teams also, but this is a man's team, and each one has an oar. It's not like you get in a rowboat and you have two oars. Each one has an oar. And he trained them in this movie I saw to be able to synchronize themselves together. So what they did was they blindfolded themselves so that they couldn't see who was doing what. And they had to learn to synchronize themselves specifically at a perfect time to push that boat. At first, they were banging into each other. The boat was rocking until they got it correct. You see, without working side by side and without working together in, in a unified mindset, we're never going to be able to accomplish what God has for us. If there's always squabbling, if there's contention, if there's strife, if there's arguing going on in the house of God, then we're not going to be able to do the good work God wants us to do. Nehemiah was able to bring his builders together side by side, everyone pulling their weight and keeping their momentum going. You see, this morning, the success of God's work depends on this mindset. It is the way of thinking that God honors when we work together, when we labor together. Men and women serving with their skills and accomplishing a good work for God. You see, in our story of Nehemiah, everyone did the work. Rank didn't matter. Social status didn't matter. Even the mayor when you read it, got in and helped build the wall. No one cared who got the credit. You see, we need to put our piece of skill into building God's work on, on this earth. Every one of us has a talent here this morning. Each one of us have a specific gift God is giving you. What are you doing with that gift? What are you doing with that skill? God wants to use that skill, put that gift into use uh, so you can work side by side by someone else, teaching them or helping them to accomplish their piece uh, of uh, their, their labor. Every Christian has to connect with the vision. What is our vision? Reaching the world for Jesus Christ. Evangelism, discipleship, reaching the world for Jesus Christ. That's the vision of New Harvest Christian Fellowship, and we need to capture that vision together and let it be the vision together so that we can work and accomplish it. Throughout our 50 years of ministry, here at New Harvest, most people didn't care about who got the credit 
but more, were more interested in doing their part in reaching people for the kingdom of God. And then the last thing I want to share with you is that they built with enthusiasm. They built with passion. They labored for God with passion. So my question this morning for you is how has your enthusiasm and passion for the work of God been lately? How has your enthusiasm for the ministry you might be involved in, how is that, what is the level of that enthusiasm and passion today, this morning, right here, right now? Is it as it was when you first got into ministry or were asked to help do something for God? Or has through over the years maybe begun to dwindle and not as it was when you first started? Are you still enthusiastic about what God has done in your life? Are you still appreciative of the fact that we've been set free, you've been set free, born again? Our sins have been forgiven. Our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Are you still enthusiastic about that? Because I tell you, the enemy of our faith wants to pour cold water on our enthusiasm and uh, our passion for God. How enthusiastic were they building that wall and repairing those gates? Well, in our story, some of the builders who finished their job doing their part of the rebuilding went to work somewhere else to help somebody else. There was no, well, I've done my part, and I'm not doing any more. I put in my time, and so I'll, I'll just let the, the young whippersnappers do it now. There was no been there, done that kind of attitude. Let somebody else do something because I'm finished. But instead, they wanted to continue to do a good work for God. So I ask you this morning, do you want to continue to still do a good work for God? Do you still want to rise up and build, rise up and accomplish more than we've accomplished in 50 years for the kingdom of God? And it says they got busy, and so maybe it's time for some to get busy in this building. Maybe it's time for some to shake off the dust and say, Pastor, pastors, what can we do now to help build for another 10, 15, 20, 50 years, if that's the case? You see, because that's what's gotten us here for 50 years. People quitting didn't get us here. People who were half-passionate didn't get us here, although that probably did happen, and were people like that. But it was the majority of people who had that fire burning within them, that loved God, that cared about other people than what God did in their lives, and couldn't wait to tell them about the good news of a risen Savior. See, the people in our story in the book of Nehemiah were fighting for their faith. They were fighting for their families, and they were fighting for their future. You and I are fighting for our faith in this day and age. We are fighting for our families in this day and age, and we are fighting for the future of our children, generation in this day and age. You see, Jesus complained about the church of Laodicea wasn't that they didn't have talent or they didn't know the truth of the Word of God, but that they just didn't have any passion. No ganas. He said, I wish you were cold or hot and not lukewarm. You see, Nehemiah and the workers never lost vision or passion as to why they were doing the work for God, a good work for God. How about you this morning? Do you still remember the why 
you got saved? Do you still remember the why you wanted to get involved in ministry? Do you still remember the why you wanted to tell somebody about Jesus Christ? Do you still remember the why you're grateful about what God has done in your life? If not, then we'll make an altar call this morning so that you can be revived and that passion can begin to flow once again through your spiritual body. We have a righteous purpose at New Harvest. We have a clear plan at New Harvest. We have a willing people. How many people are willing to do a work for God? We have a willing people here after 50 years at New Harvest and people with a burning passion this morning at New Harvest. Ingredients, persistence for doing a good work for God. I want us to bow our heads for a few moments and close our eyes if we